Here we're going to look and see how to find the velocity of sound in water. Again, the equation is the same as in air. It's equal to the square root of the bulk modulus divided by the density. Now, the bulk modulus for water is quite different, of course, than the bulk modulus for, um, for air because it's not nearly as compressible. So these are quite big numbers. It's 2.1 times 10 to the 9 newtons per square meter. That's 2.1 billion newtons for every square meter to get a change, uh, to, um, to get water to compress a certain percentage. All right, so let's plug those numbers in and see what we get. So this is equal to the square root of 2.1 times 10 to the 9th newtons per square meter, all divided by the density of water. And of course, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. There we go, cubic meter. And let's see what that is equal to. Now remember, for air, at SDP conditions was 331 meters per second. Let's see what we get over here. So we have 2.1 uh, e to the ninth power divided by 1,000, and then taking the square root, and we get 1,449 meters per second. 1,449 meters per second. If we divide that by 331, which is 4.4, so it's approximately equal to 4.4 times velocity of sound in air. Because the, it's so much more difficult to compress water, the speed at which the compression waves in water, because sound waves in water are compression waves, the speed at which they move to water is much greater because the restoration force is so great, so the acceleration of the molecules and the movement of the sound is much faster in a much a less compressible liquid like water as compared to more compressible uh, liquid as like air. So that's how you calculate the sound in water. In our next video, we'll calculate the sound of the velocity of sound in a metal and see how that compares to water and air. I guess my guess would be that it's a lot faster because again, metal is much more difficult to compress. So let's find out.